So the Candy Crush MV just dropped, and since I didn't make a theory video about the Flower Rhythm MV, I wanted to share my ideas for both of these MVs. While both MVs are not really that lore heavy, I still feel like they are supposed to make something clear to us, since both the Birth and Girls Night MVs showed us a lot of details that this far are a little difficult to decipher. The Candy Crush MV has this VHS effect over it that not only reminds me of the drawing scenes in the Birth MV, but also fits into my dream theory idea. Remember how BB's Everyday I Love You MV had this VHS kind of look? And we know that that MV was showing us BB's broken memories. So what if this MV and the Birth MV show us broken memories or illusions as well? I had this theory that the Girls' Night MV and the Birth MV show us the same events happening, but basically in two different styles, from two different perspectives. Now we see Atomus' pre-debut songs from another perspective as well. Flower Rhythm shows us a different perspective of Kewa, Candy Crush shows us a different perspective of Plastic Candy, and then lastly, Air will probably show us a different perspective of the Air Force One MV. Which is quite interesting since we do have an MV for the Air Force One song, so maybe Air will show us a different side to the events of the Air Force One MV, and therefore it will probably be a little bit more lore heavy, but I don't know. I had the idea that the pre-debut releases of Artemis this far have been showing us dreams or illusions. That what is happening in the MVs is maybe from another timeline or altogether or just showing us fabricated memories, just like the Everyday I Love You MV did. Then the Air MV could clear up some of the unsolved aspects of the Air Force One MV if it would show us the true events instead of the illusions the members saw. Besides the points I made in my last theory video, which you should check out if you want to know more about my dream theory. I have some more points I would like to make, and to do so I will analyze the Flower Rhythm and the Candy Crush MVs. First of all, let's take a quick look at the Flower Rhythm MV. To start off with the most controversial part of the MV, let's talk about the symbols. There is this quick scene with a lot of symbols flashing in black and white. I guess you already know how important the black and white motif is for the Luna members and how it demonstrates somebody seeing the world without oddness. You can check out my videos on the Outer Circle members to find out more, but basically black and white is showing us that the members are not seeing the whole truth and that they are blind to something. In the case of the Outer Circle unit, they are basically blind to their odd eye powers and the oddness around them. So, the symbols are a flower with a black and white background before this background gets colored than a star, but specifically this looks like a pentagram, which is a symbol used in witchcraft. It is generally associated with occult things, but it is actually a symbol used for good and it protects you against evil. Only when you turn it around it becomes an evil symbol. Then it is the symbol for the devil because of the two horns. So just keep in mind how flipping the symbol makes it an evil symbol. Then this flower symbol is distorted, maybe because of the pentagram. Then it could mean that the flower is an evil entity that is scared away by the good energy of the pentagram. Or it shows us how this flower is just an illusion that flickers in and out of existence. Then we see a quote unquote dead smiley. These crossed out eyes are usually used to show a cartoon character being KO or something like that. So yeah. Next an evil smiley, smiling. So one that is KO and then one that is happy about it. Maybe this smiley caused this one to be KO. Then we have black switching to the sun, maybe an eclipse happening. This smiley face that is turned around, which could mean that something is reversed or flipped on its head. Then we see white. So yeah, something being flipped on its head would fit an eclipse really well, because an eclipse in the Luniverse is also used as a symbol for opening your eyes to the world around you and being able to see oddness. It brings things into the light and changes your perspective. Just like Cherry was flipped on her head once she ate the cherry. Now another flower, but this one seems to me like a tulip. They are symbols for love. Then you can see a star that seems to be glowing and that looks a little bit like the star from the Birth and Bee drawing. Then this is interesting, because it does kind of look like the distorted flower symbol, but it could also be a distorted butterfly symbol. Butterflies being a really important symbol in the Luniverse, like you probably already know. And lastly, this looks a lot like the symbol that BBC used for their last Luna album, the Origin album, as they call it. I mean, if you want me to overanalyze this, then I would tell you that this tells us the story of the members, somewhat. 
The flower is a symbol for the events of the birth envy, because the birth teasers had a lot of flowers in them, and the envy had flowers as well. And then this flower distorts because someone from the outside is using magic through a pentagon to help the members to get rid of these illusions. Then the crossed out smiley could be about Artemis, the goddess, being killed by the evil alien light being that we also see in the birth envy. Then the eclipse flipped things on its head, so maybe the members now are able to see through the lies again, but they are too late, symbolized by the upside down smiley, because there already is another flower blooming, the tulip. Maybe a symbol for them being reborn as new flowers like we see in the MV, underlined by the star looking similar to the star from the birth MV. Since this shot shows us the new flowers all grown up with the light being. And then the distorted butterfly, because this rebirth is changing and distorting the Lunaverse timeline and the members' future. And then they could end up having a really bad future, being controlled by this evil light being, because this is the Origin album logo and the members really didn't have a great time or future at the time this album was produced. And we see time and time again how flipping something good turns it into something evil. A smiley becomes a frown, a symbol to protect people becomes the logo of the devil, and so on. And we also know that in the Loneverse a lot of things are flipped on its head. I mean, their last title track was literally called Flip That, so yeah. I am guessing that they want us to look at things from another perspective. To flip the events and to maybe look a little differently at things. While we think that Jinso is the bad guy in the Birth Envy, what if we flip this? Maybe she is the one member that tries to save the others? Then her being around the light being is less of her following the light being blindly, and more so her trying to get close to it to be able to destroy it, just like Gohan did in the Girls' Night MV. But I would only tell you all of this if you'd ask me to overanalyze. Also, this scene of Jinso being the only member to not distort, while she also is the only member that has no blonde hair, is quite interesting to me. Because of the birth envy, I would guess that people with blonde hair are followers of the light beings, which in a way also fits into the girls' night envy since Bibi is the only member with blonde hair and she is the one that is taken over by the aliens, but whatever. And Jinso having dark red hair, similar to Gohan and girls' night, to me feels kind of like a rebellion, then her not being distorted could be because she can see through the illusions and dreams that the light beings make the members see. She is enlightened and has red hair because of it. Which again is another aspect that fits into the flipping things, because we normally associate light colors with positive aspects, like angels being white, and dark colors with negative aspects, like wearing a dark suit to a funeral and a white dress to a wedding. So maybe we have to flip things because the blonde haired characters are not angels, but the followers of the evil light beings. And then the dark haired characters are the only ones rebelling against these evil creatures, like Go On and Junso, for example. But more on this later. Also, I think the members' outfits and hair colors are purposeful in this MV. All of the members have a white part in their outfit. All of the Order Circle members have a purple part in their outfit while the two one-third members have something in this metallic silver shade. But I can't quite tell if this belt on Jinsoul is also silver, so take this with a grain of salt. Hasol also has these red and purple strings on her outfit that are really easy to miss, but what is noticeable to me is the fact that Jinsoul's blue seems to be absent from the outfit colors. Kimlip has a red shirt, Cherry has purple pants, well, and Hasol has these red and purple strings. Only Jinso has no blue, and the other members also don't have any blue. But we do see blue in the background, so again, I don't know how much this is a reference to anything or just coincidence. Also, to just quickly throw out some of my predictions for the next pre-release, I think we will see Hustle on the next thumbnail. At the time birth dropped, I was wondering why they show us Kimlip and Heejin on the thumbnail instead of all of the members, but this actually makes a lot more sense ever since. We have Kimlip and Heejin, then Cherry, and now Jinsoul. So only Hustle is left, and there also is only one pre-release left. So the next one will feature Hustle on the thumbnail, hopefully. <laughs> I also could imagine the next MV having a lot more lore in it, since it probably shows us Air Force One from Artemis' perspective, and Air Force One had a lot of lore in it. Just remember the soul sign that is originally from the butterfly error, or the fact that they drove around in a yellow car, or the fact that they had a lot of crowns and cherries in the MV. So yeah. Now onto the Candy Crush MV. This one was really interesting as well. First of all, it confirms the theory of a lot of Orbit and Udi, 
that theorize that the pre-releases will be based on the pre-debut tracks of the Artemis members. First of all, the fact that this takes place in a roller coaster alley, while both the Everyday I Love You MV and the Sensitive MV had similar scenes, does confirm a lot to me, personally. At the time Sensitive was released, I had the idea that the events of the MV might be dreams that the members have while they're in these cryo sleep pods. And why this? Well, the Everyday I Love You MV showed us BB's broken memories with this dreamy looking filter over it. And it showed us these events happening that we do know are not fully real. So yeah, the roller skating alley to me felt like a quite purposeful reference to BB's broken memories. As if Lucemble wanted to let us know that the events of the Sensitive MV are not necessarily happening for real as well. That the members are now remembering these broken memories through their dreams just like BB did. And now the Candy Crush MV not only has this VHS kind of look that BB's MV had, but also takes place in a roller skating alley, which to me is supposed to bring the same point across. That this is not really happening to the members and that they might be sleeping in these space pods as well, dreaming or misremembering these past events. To underline the feeling of these being illusions or dreams, I also would like to add that they made the members look separated from the environment on purpose. If you look a little closer, then you can see that in some scenes the members have these black outlinings. As if they were just filming this in front of a green screen and now through them being edited in, they have these harsh outlines. But we know for a fact that they did film this on location, because of the behind the scenes photos the members posted on Instagram. So this was done on purpose to make this look fake or unnatural. And they also used this dark blue color palette that was already used for the Girls Night MV. Might not be on purpose, but it is interesting nonetheless, because it makes the members stand out with their outfits that are mostly in red. And while we are talking about color palettes, there are some scenes that really strongly remind me of Eve's new MV, where she also roller skates together with Bibi. Oh, and also might be a stretch, but there is the USA flag incorporated into both Jinsoul's and Heejin's outfits. And where are the Lucemble members in the Girls' Night MV? And another thing connecting the Artemis and Lucemble members is their hair color. In Lucemble's MV, Bibi with blonde hair is taken over by the alien machines. Her eyes turn red and she becomes cold and emotionless. So, what if the members having blonde hair is them being taken over by the aliens? This would also explain why the girls around the light being in the illustrations all have blonde hair, while the members in the birth MV didn't all have blonde hair. This would then mean that the members at the time were not taken over by the light being alien creatures yet. But in the end, they, or their clones, were taken over by the aliens because they have blonde hair now, besides Jinsoul. And adding onto this, Yojin and Hasul both have pink hair. And we know that Yojin was taken away by the aliens while we see Hasul all alone at the dinner table in the birth MV. Maybe Hasul got taken away by the aliens as well. Then Jinsoul being the only member in the Artemis group with dark red hair, just like Gohan had in the Girls' Night MV, might show us that these two are fighting the aliens and are trying to get back the control over their bodies and minds. And maybe Jinsoul's and Gohan's scenes mirroring one another is letting us know that Jinsoul wasn't the one who turned evil and met up with the aliens to be friends, but instead she met up with the aliens to destroy it, just like Gohan did. Underlining the message of flipping something or looking at it from another perspective, which I was talking about earlier. This would also explain why in the Flower Rhythm MV, she is the only one that isn't distorted. And them being trapped in a dream world also explains why these new songs are romantic love songs while Birth was a really sad breakup kind of song. Because now they don't feel sad anymore about the members not being together, but instead they feel great because they are living in a dream world and forgot all about it. Now they are happily talking about love and stuff. And lastly, can I mention that Chu referenced aliens in her solo as well? I mean, she has a song called Alien, a song called Hitchhiker, which could also be a reference to aliens, who sometimes are referred to as hitchhikers of the universe. Then there are also these monster beings in her MV, and she could have forgotten about the members as well. Maybe she, just like the other members, is living in an illusion and is unable to wake up from her dream. But who knows? So thanks for watching and if you liked the video, you can like and subscribe. And we will see us next week, so till then.